Good morning. Good morning. Our scripture reading this morning will be Romans chapter 1, verses 15 and 16. So as much as in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Good morning. Great to see everybody together to worship God. Before we uh, begin our lesson for today, uh, the adult class in the auditorium is made a commitment to send our kids here at the Liberty Church of Christ to Maywood. So I uh, want everybody to know that. If you have a child or a grandchild, any of you here that are worshiping with us here at Liberty, that would like to take a week of Christian camp to train uh, your child, grandchild, great-grandchild, then get them signed up. And we are the adult auditorium class are going to sponsor them going to take care of their fees, going to take care of a couple of other things for them. So uh, you need to sign up. There's a sign-up sheet in the back on the clipboard. You put their name on it and pick which week that you'd like them to go so we can register them. And also, I just put out a, a form with information that they're going to ask when we register the children. They're going to ask their date of birth and different questions. So i got to know all of that exactly so that we can put it all in. So get that form and fill it out and get it back to me and we'll get together and figure out the best way to get all of our children that want to go. And remember, if they're 8 years old all the way up to 18 years old, they're, they're qualified to go, and they need to go. It'll be a great experience for them this summer. So please, 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 this is your invitation. This is something that we want to do for you. And the adult uh, auditorium class is excited about being able to do it for you. So please, please, please get signed up for the Maywood Christian Camp. Power. That's the title of today's lesson. If you're taking notes, and I hope that you are. Power. Well, what in the world is power? Well, the Greek word, and I don't speak Greek, but I have an interlineal uh, Bible access to that, so you can do the same thing, an interlineal Bible, which puts it in Greek for you. And the Greek word behind power is dynamis, D Y. N-A-M-I-S, and a few variations of dynamis. There's dynamite, demos, different things, but dynamis is the root word, and that is where we get our English word dynamite. It comes from that word. So when we think of dynamite, we think of power, and it comes from the Greek word dynamis. We get another word, dynasty. When you think about a, a kingdom that has got powerful rulers. They may have a dynasty where this first king, second king, third king, all the way down. It was the family dynasty or the power dynasty. And it has to do with power because they're in power for these generations. Another word is dynamo. Somebody said, well, that little kid, he's a real dynamo. What do you mean by that is that he has power. He has energy. He can get something done. Now, today's lesson, we're going to use that word power in an electrical circuit. Okay, this is the illustration that we're using. Uh, when everybody says, well, we got a thunderstorm coming, tornadoes are in the area, it's bad things, lightning striking, winds blowing, we may lose what tonight? Power. power. We may lose power. So that's, how we're, that's the illustration that we're going to use. Now, for you electricians out there, be merciful to me because this is, this is an electrical circuit, but I understand that electricians and electricity, there's a lot more complexity to it, but understand this is a simple illustration for today's lesson. But here is what an electrical power circuit looks like in its most simple uh, context. And here it is. There is a source... That's, that's represented up there by your battery. Now, you may have your source of power in your house would be what, class? 
Yeah, the circuit breaker. You go to your circuit breaker. That's where all the source and the power is in the house is a circuit breaker. Of course, it's got a source on farther back to the, uh, the plant where it's generated. But the source represented here is the battery. That's where the power originates from. Then that battery is absolutely worthless if it's just sitting there. When I say worthless, you understand what I mean. It cannot do anything uh, in a productive way. It's just, it, it still has its power. It's still there, but it can't do anything unless it has a path. And the path is the wire. It's the wire that goes from the source outward. So that green would be coming from the positive all the way up. That's your path for this power to go through. And then there's a, typically a switch. Uh, you, you don't have to put a switch in there. Uh, it could go straight to the load. The load is, uh, is the light bulb, the motor, the refrigerator, the television, uh, whatever it is that you want to run. You want to do something. But in this case, it's the light bulb. That's called the load. Now, we put a switch in there because if you didn't, class, what would happen to the light bulb? It'd burn all the time. You know, there would not be any way to cut power to the light, uh, and then so it couldn't turn it off. Now, uh, we, we don't really need a switch, do we, when it comes to this particular illustration that we're, we want the power of God all the time. But uh, there is a switch, typically, and we'll, we'll use that in our illustration. So... Keep this in mind. If you're taking notes, you can even draw it and, and see there's a source, there's a path, there's a switch, there's a load. That is the most simplest circuit that you can find. And I'm no electrician, but, uh, but understand that concept. So using that as an illustration, let's begin with power. And that power is the source. I'm going to use some P words. So the source is the power. Do everybody understand where we're going in this illustration? Well, what or who is the power? The power, of course, is God. God is the source. God is the power. And we have to begin to understand that if we ever want to do anything productive in our spiritual lives, we got to understand where the power comes from. If I do not understand where the power is coming from, then I cannot run the light bulb. I cannot really get things to happen out here. Things won't happen the way they need to unless I can get it back in touch with the source. We need to get in touch with our source. We need to get in touch with our power. And that power, of course, is God. But when we think about the power of God, we're just humans. We're, we're robed in the flesh. We're so weak how can we even begin to fathom the power of God? Well, let's look in the Bible and see how it's translated. And of course, I'm using the King James Version when I'm translating these, these things. But in the Bible, in the King James Version, there are a few words that they took the word dynamis, power, and the King James Version translated it into an English word. And it's not always the same English word. Different English word. And so when I'm reading that English word, maybe I can grab the concept of what the text is saying instead of just dynamis, power. Because I, I really want to understand God's power. So what English words did they translate it to to help me? And so one word that they did that is the word virtue. And that is found in Luke chapter 6, Verse 19, this is when Jesus is making his way to Jairus to raise his daughter. But while he's headed that way, this woman is, is, is coming up, you know, to, to, uh, to be healed and all that. But anyway, the whole multitude sought to touch him. Everybody wanted to touch Jesus. Why? Here's the reason. For there went virtue out of him, and he healed them all. Virtue means dynamis. That's, that's the word that they use. If you're looking at the Greek and you go down through, what did he bring out? Dynamis is what was in him. And so there was going dynamis. There was going dynamite. There was going power out of him. So everybody wanted to touch him. And later on when Jesus had that woman to touch him, uh, he, he felt the virtue go out of him. What does that mean? He felt the power go out. And when we associate that in that context, we see that this virtue, this power, is God's power to, 
to do miracles, God's power to, to make things happen. And so we can think about the power of God in His virtue, in His power to do miracles. It's also found the word might is translated from the Greek word dynamis. We find that in Romans chapter 15, verse 19. Romans 15, 19. Here's what Paul, writing to Romans, says. Through mighty signs. That word mighty, if you look it up in your interlineal uh, Bible, you will see the word mighty is translated from the word dynamis, or word from dynamis. So, powerful, what? Signs and wonders. By the power, there it is again, dynamite. Specifically, dynamite. The very same Greek word, dynamai, was translated into power, and it was translated into mighty in that very same verse. So they're sitting there reading this, and they see the two words, dynamis and dynamis, and they say, now how can we translate that so it can really uh, kind of help us to appreciate the power of God? Well, we can translate it power, which they did, the second dynamis, there in Romans 15, 19, but we can also translate it to mighty signs, powerful signs. So when we think of God's power, we can think of His virtue, His, his ability to heal people, and His ability to do signs and His mighty power. He's got powerful signs and powerful things, and it comes from the Spirit of God. And of course, there's the concept of His power. But another English word is strength. Strength. This is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 8. And Paul is writing to the Corinthians, and he kind of uses this word about himself, but the word itself helps us to appreciate the power of God. Listen to what that says in 2 Corinthians 1.8. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant. What does that mean? We don't want you to be ignorant about something. We want you to know something. Well, Paul, what do you want us to know? Here it is. We want you to know about our trouble, which came to us in Asia. And of course, there was some trouble that Paul had with a goddess Diana, and they tried to kill him and all that, and he had to get out of town. But he said, we want you to know about that, because here's what happened. We were pressed out of measure. When you're pressed out of measure, that means you're beyond your ability. If you pour milk into a cup, a measuring cup, and it's beyond the measure, it's out of measure, it's overflowing. So we were, we were really pressed beyond our ability to measure it. But then he goes on and says this, above strength. And that word is denomen, power insomuch that we were despaired even of life. In other words, it was beyond our power to do anything about it. When we were in Asia and got all these troubles and all these trials and we were being pressed and burdened, it was beyond our power. It was beyond our strength to be able to deal with it. Let me tell you something. When it comes to God, He has all power. He has all strength. And another word is ability. That's found in Matthew 25, verse 15. And here's what that verse says. Unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To every man, listen, according to his several or individual abilities. And that word ability is from Deniman. According to his power. And straightway he took his journey. So he passed out these talents according to the power that he had to handle one talent, two talents, and five talents, according to his ability. So power can be looked at when we're thinking about God's power through his virtue, his might, his strength, his ability. And then there's another word. It's kind of in the reverse. Follow with me on this one. And it's the word authority. The word for authority, I understand, is extosian in Greek. Extosian. So if I'm reading Greek, which I don't read Greek, but if I'm reading Greek and I see the word extosian, then I would say, oh, that means authority. So these translators from 
uh, the King James Version, and they were translating it into English. They were reading Mark chapter 2, verse number 10. And while they were reading Mark 2, verse number 10, they come across the word extotian. But instead of translating that word authority, they translated the word power. Because they wanted us to understand that this was a dynamite thing. And here's what the verse says. But that you may know that the Son of Man, in other words, he was going to heal somebody. And right before he healed him, he said, Thy sins be forgiven you. And boy, all the folks got upset about that. Only God can forgive sin. He's blaspheming, trying to forgive this guy's sins. He said, wait, 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 just a minute, guys. The only reason I said, thy sins be forgiven you, I'm about to heal this guy. But I wanted you to know something. What? But that you may know, Mark 2 verse 10, that the Son of Man, Jesus, hath power, extortion, authority, I have the authority, I have the power on earth to forgive sins. So then he turned to the sick of the palsy, and of course he healed the guy. So the point is, authority. So I cannot imagine the power of God. It's just beyond me. But if I break it down into these concepts and say, you know, he's virtuous, he's mighty, he's strong, he has the ability to do anything, he has the authority in my life. So instead of me looking to the authority of a psychologist or authority of some president or the authority of any human being, I look to the authority of God. That helps me to appreciate and understand a little bit about the power of God. In fact, 57 times in the King James Version, the word Almighty is found. 48 times it's in the Old Testament. Eight times it's in the New Testament, Almighty. Of those eight times, seven of them are found in the Revelation. And only one's found elsewhere in the New Testament. The point is, in the Revelation, it's a, it's a sign, it's a symbol trying to express to us that we win in the end. How? By the almighty power of God. We call that word almighty in our English. We try to discuss it calling him omnipotent. The word omnipotent means that he's omnipotent. Potent, that's two words, two words put together. Omni means all, and potent means power. When something is potent, that means it's powerful. Boy, that medicine, boy, that was real, really potent. Well, that means it's powerful. So omnipotent means all powerful. He's almighty. So he's all virtuous. He's almighty. He's all strong. He's all ability. He all authority. In Revelation chapter 1, verse number 8, here's where he used one of those words. I am Alpha and Omega. Of course, this is Jesus talking. But he says, I'm the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which was and is, or which is and was, and which is to come, I'm the Almighty. Because Jesus said, all power is given unto me. So Jesus has power. But he has power through God. Because here's what Romans chapter 1 verse 16, which Don read in our hearing just a moment ago. I am not ashamed, Paul said, of the gospel of Christ. Christ is what I'm preaching. And I'm not ashamed of the good news of Jesus. Why? For it, the good news of Jesus, the gospel of Christ, is the power of God. Unto salvation. To everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. In other words, the gospel is virtuous. It's mighty. It has the strength. It has the ability. It has the authority. It's all the power you need to do what you must do. And not only is it the gospel of Christ generically, there's a specific part of it. Here's what 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18 says. Write this verse down. Go back and read it later. 1 Corinthians 1.18 says, For the preaching of the cross 
is to them that perish, it's foolishness. When, when you preach the cross of Jesus, uh, just a while ago we took the, the Lord's Supper and we were, we were commemorating the death of Jesus, His body and His blood on the cross. We even had a picture on the wall, if you notice that, of Jesus on the cross. People who don't believe that, they walk in here and they said, boy, those guys are sure stupid. Boy, those guys are, are they're just foolish. Why? Because they're sitting here looking at a picture that someone drew of a man 2,000 years ago dying on a cross, and they're eating and drinking uh, bread and uh, fruit of the vine, commemorating his body and his blood. Oh, how foolish that is. That's the foolish thing I ever heard in my life. We should be out on the riverbank fishing, or this is our only day off. We should do something that we want to do. It's foolish to commemorate the cross of Christ. But here's what Paul said to the Corinthians. The preaching of the cross is to them that perish. They're not going to make it. Well, it's foolish to them, but unto us which are saved. What is it? It is the power of God. We just tapped into the power of God just a little while ago because we were preaching to one another, uh, having a memorial, telling one another what we were doing about the power of the cross. We're tapping into that because the preaching of the cross is the power of God. We understand that the cross is virtuous, mighty, strong, the ability, the authority. That's where we turn to. We kneel at the cross. We come to the cross. We understand that without going to the cross where Jesus died, there is no power. There's no access to power. Why? Because our path to God, our path to it, the gospel of Jesus Christ, is the power. The preaching of the cross is the power. The only way to get to the power is through the path. And the only path there is, is Jesus. Here's what John chapter 14 verse 6 says. Jesus said to him, what? I am the way. My gospel. The gospel of Christ. That's the way. The cross of Christ. That's the way. I am the way. Jesus said, I am the truth. And I am the life. And no man can come unto the Father but by me. There is a great power that we can access. We know Him as God. He's the source. But we have no access to that battery. We have no access to that switch box. We have no access to that power unless there's a wire going to it, unless there's a path to it. And the only path is Jesus. We cannot walk up with a light bulb in our hand and walk close to that circuit board over there and say, okay, turn on this light. It will not happen. It won't. The power has got to have a path from that circuit board to this light bulb. And the only path is Jesus. You cannot think of a... There is no other path. In our illustration, you understand, but in reality of the spiritual realm, Jesus is the only way. The gospel of Christ, the cross of Christ, that's the power of God. That's the access to it. He is the path, one and only. And then we can fulfill our purpose. And that purpose in our case is the load. You know, why even have a light bulb if it's not going to shine? There is a purpose for it. Why have a refrigerator if it's not going to keep the hamburger meat and the milk cold? Why have a television if, if, if it's not going to air anything? There is the purpose. There's the load. And folks, the purpose is us. We are the load. We are the purpose. Jesus said, or God said through the Hebrew writer, in Hebrews 2 verse 10 I believe it is, that it became God to bring many sons into glory through Christ. It became Him. That, that become means it suited Him. If, if somebody walks up to you, oh, that suit, that dress, those shoes, that whatever, that becomes you. That, that's, that looks good on you. That's what you need. Well, it became God to bring many sons into glory. It's what God wants. It's what suits God is to bring us in the glory. The reason that He sent Jesus to the planet and the reason He put Him on the cross is for us. We are the load. Now, of course, He gets 
joy from it. His source, His power can be exercised on planet earth for us, but we are the load. It is for a purpose that Christ came to this earth to save us. And here's what Paul said to the Philippians. In Philippians 2, verse 15, that, here's the purpose, you may be blameless, harmless, the sons of God, children of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. There's a lot of crookedness and perversion going on out there. But in the middle of all of that, you can be children of God. You can be harmless. Among whom this perversion, this crooked generation, you shine as lights in the world. When we access the power of God through Jesus, we can shine as lights. It will work. We can make a difference in our own lives and the lives of others because our lights can shine. But without access to the power through the path of Jesus, our lights won't shine. we got to plug in. And I use that plug for switch. And I realize that there's a difference between a switch and a plug, but... There at that juncture, a plug and a switch is what connects the power. We've got to plug into Jesus. Switch on. Plug in. If we're going to access that power. If that light bulb comes on, you've got to flip the switch to get the power through the path to the light. If we're going to shine as lights in the world, we've got to plug into Jesus to get to the power. But so many times we don't. Our light bulb is out. And if you call an electrician, hey, I turned the switch on, and the light didn't come on. What's the problem? Well, the electrician is going to see if the light bulb's blown. Something's wrong with the light. Maybe the path is cut. Maybe the switch ain't good. Maybe the circuit breaker's turned off. He's going to look that circle all over to see where it fails, to see where the circuit is, is not complete. And that's what happens to us. When our light is not shining in the world, let me share something with you, class. Listen carefully. It's not the problem of the power. Amen? God is the power. If my light ain't shining, it ain't His fault. We can blame Him. We can find all reasons in the world to say it is His fault. It's not His fault. And it's not the path. That path is not broken. Jesus is not broken. The path is right. If that is if our light ain't shining, it's because we somehow ain't plugged in or there's something wrong with the light bulb. And these things can be it. Here's a couple of verses. Take them for your study. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 5 says this, You have a form of godliness, but you deny the power of it from such turn away. You, you look like you're religious. You have a form of godliness, but you're not in touch with the power. You deny the power. You've switched off the power. You didn't connect with Jesus. You're trying to get your religion from some other source. Folks, that's a problem. That's why your light ain't shining. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 17 says this, For Christ, Paul talking to the Corinthians, he said, He sent me not to baptize. He sent me to preach the gospel. That's what I'm here to do. I let other people do the baptizing. When I'm in town, I preach the gospel, and Joe will baptize everybody. I don't want people thinking that I'm baptizing in my own name, right? Uh, Because I'm not. They're going to baptize you in the name of Christ because He's your path. But I'm here to preach the gospel. That's what I come to do. But I'm doing it, listen, not with wisdom of words. I'm not just giving you an eloquent speech. I'm not doing that. If I'm doing that, if I'm just listening to wisdom of words, he says the cross of Christ is made of none effect. I'm taking Jesus out of the, I'm taking the path out of the source. Let me tell you, that's a problem. If we're just, if, hey, my light ain't shining, what have I done? I took the cross of Christ out. I'm making it none effect. Why? Because I'm trying to do it through wisdom of words. I'm, I'm reading all the best books on self help. I'm reading all the stuff out yonder that are available. But instead of going to the Bible and finding what Jesus says, don't go with wisdom of words. Our light won't shine. In Matthew 15, verse number 6, he says, Whoever does not honor his father or his mother, 
he shall be free. This is the point. Uh, if you do honor, you will be free. If you don't honor, you won't be free. Thus have you made the commandment of God, listen, of none effect, how? By your tradition. They come up with a wild way of taking money and not helping their parents. They're, oh, I can't help my parents because I took this money and I offered it to God. So the God is, you know, God can't give it to the parents. So, so this is dedicated to God. But then they're using that money for themselves. So by their tradition, they've figured out a way to bypass the commandment of God, honor your mother and father. So instead of honoring mother and father, which is commanded to God, their source, they've figured out a way through their tradition to do it a different way. That's the point. We, our light will stop shining if we make up all kinds of traditions that we live by that's not according to the power of God. And we do that all the time. We come up with our own ideas about religion and tradition and what's right and wrong in our own minds. That will get your light off quick as in anything. And finally, Romans chapter 4, verse number 14, For if they which are of the law be heirs, then your faith is made void. If you're trying to work your way to heaven, then your faith in Jesus, the cross of Christ, the gospel of Christ, to access the power of God, you're trying to do it all yourself. You've made it of none effect. He goes on to say, the promise is made of none effect. The light bulb is not effective because you're trying to make the light bulb the source. The light bulb is not the source. We're out here trying to shine our light. Oh, I'm going to let my little light shine. But we're trying to do it ourselves. I'm going to be good enough. I'm going to be loving enough. I'm going to be forgiving enough. I'm going to shine my light myself. But I'm not connected through Christ to the power. Your light ain't shining. You're making that of none effective. That's why our light don't shine. We're trying to do it ourselves. We can't. We need to get in touch with God. And the only way to do that is to tap into the power, plug into the power. And the power is, of course, through Jesus Christ. Because the gospel of Jesus Christ is the life of Christ the sermons of Christ, the teachings of Christ, all these things, but it's also the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, which, of course, the Roman letter tells us that's what happens in our baptism. We die to ourselves, we're buried in Christ, and we raise to walk a new life. That's how we plug in, right? It's into Christ. We're buried with Him in baptism. Uh, we, we put on Christ in baptism. That's how we plug into this thing. That's how we plug into the power because when we preach the cross of Christ, we're not just preaching a wooden entity. That's not what we're preaching. Hundreds, thousands of people, if not millions, died on crosses in horrible ways. We're not preaching just a thing called a cross. We're preaching what happened on that cross. Amen? And what happened on that cross is the gospel of Jesus Christ, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Christ. He shed His blood. And we access, we plug in, we switch on that power when we are buried with Him in baptism into His death because He shed that blood in His death, right? And we're buried with Him in baptism into His death, right? So it's, that's where we plug in. Because the power is not in ourselves, it's not in our tradition, it's not in any of those things that we mentioned and more that people try to plug into. The power is in the blood. And Carrie picked out a great song by way of invitation. There is power in the blood. If you want to plug in today, why don't you come? While together we stand and sing.